Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we are looking at the new NVIDIA AGX Orin Developer Kit. Let's open up the box, take a spin around, install the system software, and run a demo. We open the box, and here is the AGX Orin Developer Kit. Now let's get the box that holds the accessories. Open that box up. Oh, here's the power cable, instruction manual, USB-A to USB-C cable, and our power brick. We're using USB-C power delivery. Here's the big black box bounty. Let's take a look at the front of the dev kit. Here's a USB micro B port. The port is USB 2.0. The serial debug console lives here. Here's the display port output port. This is the only way to get the display out of the developer kit. The NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orin developer kit does not support HDMI or display port over USB-C. If you want to use an HDMI monitor, you will need a display port to HDMI adapter cable. Next, we have two USB Type-A ports. They are USB 3.2, Gen 2. This is an RJ45 jack for Ethernet. This provides support for up to 10 gigabits per second. Then we have a power jack. This is one place you can power your dev kit from. Finally, on this side, we have a USB Type-C jack. It is USB 3.2, Gen 2. Also, it's a downstream facing port only. We will use this port to power the Jetson from the power brick. On this side of the Jetson, we have a micro SD card slot, the power indicator LED, and three buttons. The power button, the forest recovery button, and the reset button. On the back of the dev kit, we have two USB Type-A ports. They are USB 3.2 Gen 1. The Type-A ports on the front of the dev kit are Gen 2. Next, we have the 40-pin GPIO header. We will talk about that in a little bit. Then we have a USB Type-C port. It is USB 3.2 Gen 2. Also, it's an upstream-facing port and a downstream-facing port. This side is hiding a secret. Magnets hold on a secret cover. You want to be careful when you remove the cover. There are some wires attached to it. Opening the secret cover reveals a PCIe by 16 connector. Let's look at this from the top. You can see that there are two film antennas for the wireless card. You will want to avoid disconnecting these. If you end up having to reconnect them and you do not know how to swear, you will learn. And if you do know how to swear, you will rue the day that it was born. And this is a top view of the PCIe connector. Then we are back to the front. I'm going to detach the base from the carrier board. You shouldn't have to do this. There are four screws that hold the base, the carrier board, and the Jetson module together. I will remove those. Be careful here since nothing's being held together anymore. Now we can remove the base and take a closer look at the underside of the carrier board. Here is the HD audio header. You can connect a standard PC audio panel here. That gives you access to a microphone, line in, headphones, powered speakers, and so on. This is the M2 key E slot. This is typically used for a wireless card. This is a connector for the real-time clock backup battery. Here is the camera connector, 16 lane MIPI CSI2. Then we have the M2 Kiema slot. It is PCIe Gen 4. If you're going to use a solid state drive with this, make sure that it is PCIe and not SATA. Here is the automation header. And finally, the GPIO header. This is similar to a Raspberry Pi layout. We can access many of our hardware signal friends here. Let's put the screws in a cup so we do not lose them.
let's put the Jetson on a piece of foam. Unfortunately, this was the ugliest foam I could find. I'll hold it together while I flip it over. We flip open the secret cover. You can see that there is a cover on top of the heat sink and the fan. Here is the heat sink and the fan on top of the module. You have to be a little bit careful here. The fan is connected to the carrier board. The connector that attaches the module to the carrier board is right along here. Gently rock the heat sink back and forth and the module will detach. Here you can see the 699 pin connector along with its mate on the module. And a slightly different view. Let's put it back together and run some software. Next, we hook up our Jetson developer kit to a monitor, mouse, keyboard, and ethernet connection. I'm using a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter to drive the monitor. Here's the keyboard and the mouse in the USB ports. And here's the ethernet connection. Let's plug in USB power here, and then we'll switch over to a screencast. This is a pre-production version that NVIDIA provided for demonstration purposes. The OEM configuration process is a little bit different than the production units. Therefore, I won't cover this in much detail. It's the usual questions and threats, licensing, setting up accounts, time zone, languages, and so on. But eventually you come up to the desktop. On the first boot, it will ask you even more questions. Fill those out, and eventually you get to the desktop. Here's some specs. We are running Ubuntu 20.04 with kernel 5.10. Here are the specs compared to the last generation Xavier. Some things to notice. We have a 12 core CPU, a 2048 core GPU. On the dev kit, we have 32 gigabytes of main memory faster than previously, 64 GBs of eMMC external storage, and 13 billion transistors, which is about twice as many as the previous generation. The price is $19.99 US dollars. Now we are ready to install Jetpack. Let's open up a terminal. Let's do a distribution upgrade and then reboot the machine. After we're finished rebooting, it's time to install Jetpack itself. We don't have to use a host machine to install Jetpack anymore. We can do it straight from the repositories. However, you will still need a host machine for many things. For this demo, we've downloaded the pre-trained PeopleNet model from the NVIDIA GPU cloud. You will hear people refer to this as NGC, and we are going to run the model on our Orin using DeepStream. Let's run the model. And you can see that people are surrounded by a red box, and their faces are a blue box this full screen. We're looking at six 1920 by 1080 streams. Let's take a look at the system monitor. You can see that everything's relatively quiet. We're using about 8.3 gigabytes of memory. And here's the exciting thing about Orin. We can run multiple models at once. Let's start up Riva. I'm going to read from the book, Meditations, by Marcus Aurelius. Wow, I recognize that. <laughs> it's amazing. Book five, number one. At dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for, the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for? to huddle under the blankets and stay warm. 
but it's nicer here. So you were born to feel nice instead of doing things and experiencing them? Don't you see the plants, the birds, the ants, and spiders and bees going about their individual tasks, putting the world in order as best they can? And you're not willing to do your job as a human being? Why aren't you running to do what your nature demands? But we have to sleep sometime. Agreed. But nature set a limit on that, as it did on eating and drinking, and you're over the limit. You've had more than enough of that, but not of working. There, you are still below your quota. You don't love yourself enough, or you'd love your nature too and what it demands of you. People who love what they do wear themselves down doing it, and they even forget to wash or eat. Do you have less respect for your own nature than the engraver does for engraving, the dancer for the dance, the miser for money, or the social climber for status? When they're really possessed by what they do, they'd rather stop eating and sleeping than give up practicing their arts. Let's read another passage. That's... <laughs> okay, I'm impressed. Number five. No one could ever accuse you of being quick-witted. All right, but there are plenty of other things you can't claim you haven't got in you. Practice the virtues you, you can show. Honesty, gravity, endurance, austerity, resignation, abstinence, patience, sincerity, moderation, seriousness, high-mindedness. Don't you see how much you have to offer beyond excuses like can't? And yet you still settle for less. Or is it some inborn condition that makes you whiny and grasping and obsequious, makes you complain about your body and curry favor and show off and leaves you so turbulent inside? Okay, this is like beyond impressive. This is all being run from the device. It's not round tripping to the cloud or anything. You just download the model and run it. Let's take a look at our CPU. It doesn't seem particularly busy. Memory is looking good. We're only using 8.3 gigabytes, the GBs. Let's take a look at our GPU. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. Look at that GPU go. I'm a new day rising. I'm a brand new sky to hang the stars upon tonight. But that's the key to Orin. With this many GPU cores, you can run a whole lot of different models at once. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oh, and stay safe. Mm -hmm.